Hi there and welcome to Knox. This is our review of the Dunlop D212 GP Racer. So I've spent the whole of 2022 running the Dunlop D212 GP racers uh, on my own bike, on this bike here actually that you can see in screen. Um, getting a really good understanding uh, about what they're all about. I've mostly ridden on track, but I've also done quite a few road miles as well. I've gone through two rears and one front tire. People's opinions about what are the best tires are kind of a really subjective uh, matter. There's clearly more than one way to skin a cat and everybody's got their own preferences and what they believe in and stuff. I'm not here to say anybody's wrong. I'm not here to um, convince you to buy anything one way or another. And this video definitely isn't sponsored. Um, and just a quick note on that, um, makes it even more difficult now to kind of navigate through these reviews and stuff online because a lot of the sort of larger media partners are actually sponsored by the tire companies. So it makes it quite a difficult one to navigate through. Well, this is just our own experiences um, of the tires that we use when we go out on track and go out on the road and so forth. So to understand this set of tires properly, we probably need to clean up what they are and who they're designed for. So the D212 GP Racer is designed as a track day stroke club racing tire. So different to a road-based tire, for example, on track, you're using tire warmers. And Dunlop's recommendation is this is a 90% uh, track orientated tire, 10% road. So you kind of get the, the bias there. That means on track, we're using things like tire warmers, for example. There's also another part of clear up uh, required because actually when Dunlop launched this uh, D212 around 10 years ago, it was originally their flagship uh, treaded race tire, the one that they would be using to go out to the Isle of Man and set lap records and stuff. Now that's actually been superseded by the D213 GP Pro. Um, that's the one that all the Isle of Man guys are using out there to set the lap records and so on and so forth. Um, since the 213 came out, um, Dunlop then took the D212 changed it from the GP Pro into the GP Racer and basically changed the compounds. So if you're reading articles about the original D212 from sort of 10 years ago and so on, it's likely that that information relates to the original tire, whereas now they've reworked the compounds to be more suited to track day riders, have more longevity, a wider operating window and so on. So it's quite a modern tire basically, and this is up-to-date information on what you can buy right now. And just a quick note to say, there's two versions of the D212 GP Racer. There's firstly the treaded one, which is what we're talking about, but there's also a slick version as well. If you like slicks, you can get a slick in the same compound, what we're gonna be talking about. So in a pure track performance sense, these D212 GP racers sit slightly higher, or they do sit higher than the Sportsmark TT, which are a really good track, 50% uh, track, 50% road tire. These are really good performing tires, but these ones sit above that, but then slightly lower than the D213 GP Pros and the KR Slicks from Dunlop's Ranger at the very, very top of the tree. Now, when it comes to the D213 GP Pros and the KR Slicks, there's actually four different compounds available in each of those tires. So the operating windows of those really specific race tires are quite limited, and therefore there's four different compounds. Because this is a track orientated, uh, track day orientated tire, I should say, um, the operating window has been uh, made wider. So ultimately, while they're lesser performing, they're gonna be more flexible for track day riders, they're gonna have better longevity and just be easier to use from a user point of view. However, unlike a road-based tire, very much the recommendation is to use tire warmers with this product. 
um, which is obviously what we've done. Um, just a quick note to say, um, I've been using uh, the medium front and the endurance rear. Now that was recommended by Dunlop and it's tends to be what their recommendation is for the UK. So you get a softer front that gives really, really good feel and you get a harder rear, which um, enables fantastic performance, but also offering more longevity than what you'd get with a pure racing tire, for example. I'm also gonna put a link in the description for the recommended uh, track tire pressures from Dunlop. These are a really good guide and show you where you should be roundabouts in terms of your tire pressures. Obviously, this is gonna vary a little bit depending on the track, depending on the surface and the ambient temperature and the track temperature as well. Probably the best advice I can give you for that is to actually go and speak to the tire technician that is available on your track day. These guys are literally changing tires all day, every day. They're seeing what's coming in from customers and they're seeing what's going out and they're recommending tire pressures as well. So if you want a really specific recommendation for your day, the temperature, the track condition, so on and so forth, speak to your tra track day tire technician. That's a lot of tease. So with all that technical nonsense out of the way, let's get on to how it actually works out there in the field. And the first thing that I'll say about Dunlop tires is that they've always really, really suited the kind of experience that I want to feel when I'm out there on a motorcycle track. Now, just a quick one to say, I run um, proper race suspension that's been tuned and set up by a suspension technician, and that makes a massive difference. Dunlop tires totally fit with that because, and this is probably their real distinctive, um, is that they provide a huge amount of stability and stiffness. And every time that I run a Dunlop tire, I always feel like my bike is on absolute rails. And that's the experience that I want. I don't want pumping. I don't want, um, to feel too much flex in my tire carcass and all that kind of stuff. And that's a real distinctive of Dunlop tires and why I've always really, really liked them. These Dunlops are absolutely rock solid and you very much feel that on track. It gives a solid feeling, tracks a beautiful line and is very stable. I think that's a real distinctive. Possibly sacrifices a little bit of feeling that you might get when the front tire of a softer carcass uh, tire is kind of buckling and moving and stuff, but the stability and confidence that you get from this sort of planted feeling is worth that um, trade-off in my book. So my favorite part of these set of tires is the front, undeniably. Absolutely fantastic. Now, if this was the only front tire I'd ever use on track again in my lifetime, I wouldn't have a problem. I haven't found anything it can't do. Um, really heavy braking with the rear wheel up in the edge, rolling into a corner. Very heavy trail braking, loads of lean angle, no movements. It's just been absolutely <laughs> fantastic, to be honest. Um, no complaints from me. Um, you can run fast session after fast session where you're really trying hard and you come back in and the tire wear just looks beautiful. It's not overheated. There's no big bobbles of rubber coming off of it. This one now has picked up a few bits from the track and stuff, um, but you know, it's not falling apart. It's absolutely fantastic. So really great wear, really great performance. Um, I've done, I think five track days on this set, on this, this one front. And I reckon I could probably get another four or five out of it as well. Of course, you're going to go online and hear people talking about them getting through a set of tires in a day. You know, in the track day world, I couldn't be bothered with that. I mean, changing your wheels on a bike is a pain anyway. I could understand it from a racing point of view, but definitely not from a track day riding point of view. And these ones, I think, are absolutely top notch. The rear tire in the right conditions will match the performance of the front. In the right conditions, this tire has oodles of grip, loads of stability as we've talked about already, and you can get on the gas as early or earlier than anybody else on track. And to be honest, that's the only way to ride the 750 on track is get to 
full gas pretty much from the, X, uh, from the apex. So the first day that I did on these was at Alton Park. It was 18 degrees, fantastic day, beautiful weather, no wind or anything like that. And the tires performed awesomely. Although what I will say is that the rear does have more of a tendency uh, to tear than I've experienced before. Um, the second day was much more challenging actually. That was an April day at Snetterton and it was really cold. Uh, I think the ambient temperature was like 10 degrees and the track temperature was about four degrees. It was really quite cold and there was a bit of wind as well. There was a lot of cold uh, tire crashes that day, loads of crashes actually. The tire really struggled, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, it was tearing up like no tomorrow. I come out of corners and I just feel a lot of movement in the rear. You could almost feel the tire sort of tearing. And then you come back off your session and look at it and think, flipping heck, what have I done? And even though I put quite a lot more air in the tires and increased the pressures, um, the problem just continued to get worse all day. I think in that type of condition, in quite cold conditions, you're gonna really struggle with this tire, even though it's the endurance compound. And I can easily see people going through uh, one rear a day in that kind of environment. And then after that, I put another fresh rear on and went back to Alton again. And I've been there a couple of times since and just had the absolute best time ever. Just so much grip from them. They're just fantastic. And this rear has performed excellently. You're gonna go through these rears though quicker than you are the front. This one has done two days in really good riding conditions. One I think was like early 20s in the temperatures and the other one was 33, 34 degrees, so quite hot. Um, so it's done two days and I think I just about squeeze another one out of it as well. So you can probably say you're gonna get three, two to four days out of a rear. And just to briefly cover the road riding that I've done on the D212 GP racers. Now, obviously this is a 90% orientated track tire. So it's not designed for the road in particular. So cold weather performance, not really a priority. Wet weather performance, definitely not a priority because their assumption is that you put wet tires on for that type of riding. Um, Initially, I was quite scared about riding them on the road. Will they come up to temperature? Will I just fall off at the first corner? So on and so forth. Well, do you know what? They've been absolutely fine. I've ridden in really cold conditions, um, like two or three degrees. I've ridden in the wet. Um, I might have even ridden in a little bit of snow as well in them. Clearly, they're not ideal for that. But I think the point is, you're not just gonna fall off at the first corner and I probably wouldn't want to ride through the depths of winter in them really. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, if you're riding in the summer and you give them a little bit of time to warm up, most likely they're going to be fine. So on that note, I think if I was being picky, I'd love to see an even harder compound for the rear introduced into the range or be available. I think ultimately, if you're running them in cold conditions, you're gonna struggle with tearing and you're gonna go through tires quite quickly or certainly rear tires, you're gonna go through quite quickly. The only other um, combination that I might uh, consider investigating myself is to actually, in those conditions, Instead of running the, the rear that this one is, I, I might, if it's very cold, put Sportsmark TT on the rear uh, in place of it. Because that tire we've run in very cold conditions on track and not had any problems with tearing. Or I may even consider like a harder compound KR Slick, like an MS4, for example. I think that's gonna be a little bit more resistant to tearing from my experience. So obviously the idea of running a Sportsmark TT rear alongside the D212 GP racer front isn't an official Dunlop recommendation thing, um, nor is it really one from us either, but it would just be an avenue that I would probably like to try out, knowing the performance and longevity in colder conditions. The Sportsmark TT is a fantastic tire and definitely doesn't have any like performance um, 
issues I mean we ran them in our recent uh, superbike shootout and they performed unbelievably and we've also used them in quite cold track day conditions and not had any tearing issues either so that's our little uh, recommendation I suppose but it's definitely not an official one so that's our review I think these tires are absolutely fantastic and they are 100% the right tool for the job. Now I've done track days before on tires that weren't up to the job and honestly it spoiled the whole day. So if you're going to go on track and do track days and get into it, definitely check these out. They're very, very good high performance tires. They're going to last and they're going to look after you as well and they're going to help you progress to the next level. So thanks very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let us know what you think in the comment section and check out all the Nox gear that we use to protect ourselves on test. We'll see you next time.